Now, American troops have withdrawn from Afghanistan, meaning there's been a rapid increase in the Taliban's hold over the country. Mm, following this, Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi met senior leaders of the Islamist group to strengthen ties with, between the Taliban uh, in Tianjin. But what exactly is the motivation behind the meeting? Yeah, we're joined now by Sam Lewis, foreign affairs commentator and writer of the East Asia Insider. So, uh, Sam, good to have you with us. Uh, what do you make of this meeting? Um, so I think to understand why the meeting is taking place, you need to go back a few months. As you mentioned, um, President Biden announced that by the end of August, so the end of this month, uh, the last U.S. troop would be pulled out of Afghanistan. And since then, uh, the Taliban have taken a lot of territory, a lot of rural territory. They've taken some strategic points on the Pakistan border, uh, the Tajikistan border, Turkmenistan border. And this means that they can get sort of transit fees and taxes. Um, and this means that over time, um, they have built up such a presence that China now considers them to be a political and a military force that they will have to deal with. And given Afghanistan is on the border with China, um, even though it is a very small border, um, China are a bit worried. And so they want to have some sort of uh, conversation with them at this point, just in case within the next year or two, uh, the Kabul government falls and the Taliban come to power in some way. There are plenty of people out there who are very geopolitically sceptical of China right now and would look at this sort of this strange new potential marriage as something that brings with this a, a huge potential risk. Would those worries be founded? Well, to an extent, because ultimately China just wants to look after China's national interests. And, you know, in this case, there are potentially three that we can see. So, number one, we have uh, the economic interests, you know, the Belt and Road Initiative. I know we go on about it quite a lot, but they've invested 65 billion U.S. dollars worth of investment into the China-Pakistan economic corridor, and they want to increase that to include Afghanistan territory. Um, and number two, they want to make sure that... Um, there is no space within Afghanistan for any Uyghur separatists. Um, a UN report recently announced that the uh, East Turkestan Islamic movement within Afghanistan is, uh, currently operates within Afghanistan, uh, within Taliban territory. And even though this is a small movement, it's only a few hundred, maybe a few thousand, um, China believes that talking to the Taliban uh, is important so that the Taliban can crack down on these terrorists. Um, and number three, it's not really a geopolitical worry for China because they want to come across as, um, you know, a responsible adult within the room. They've been painting the U.S. in the last few months as, as being incredibly reckless. You know, they've left Afghanistan after promising democracy and human rights. And, and look where we are now. They never got rid of the Taliban. Um, and Afghanistan is in chaos. Dr. Uh, uh, General Petraeus this morning announced that um, civil war is on the way. Uh, President Ghani of Afghanistan announced that people should rise up against the Taliban. So we're on our way to civil war. And it looks like at least China are trying to paint it, that they're the only ones in the room who are taking this seriously and the only ones that are meeting with the Taliban and trying to create some sort of dialogue. I mean, you say they're trying to create a, a positive dialogue with the Taliban. Are, are we sort of on, on route to potentially another proxy war? Because lots of people regard China as somewhat being enemies of the West, or at least, you know, maybe faux friends. Um, but it seems to be a bit of a strange marriage of convenience, because here you have sort of ultra-Islamic um, Isl fundamentalists, really, in the form of the Taliban. And I can understand how China might see tit for tat in aid the Taliban, form a dialogue with them, and in doing so, maybe capture some of their resources and strategic routes, and perhaps they share a common enemy. But given the Chinese treatment of, or alleged treatment of uh, Muslims in, in their own country, in um, uh, Xinjiang, with the Uyghurs and the Kazakhs, it does seem to be a bit of a, an artificial friendship. Well, it was interesting that, you know, you see the photos of the meeting and the, the, the Taliban, the nine members of the Taliban delegation all have beards. And obviously that's outlawed within um, Xinjiang. If you have that within Xinjiang, you go to jail um, or, or to a, a camp of some sort. So a re-education camp, um, as they call it. But I don't think a proxy war is about to take place because ultimately, you know, we, along with the U.S., were there for 20 years. Now we've withdrawn. I don't think we'll go back in. Um, I think, you know, China's motives aren't always as sinister as they're painted to be. You know, this is their border. They want stability. They just don't care who's in power. So they don't care the fact that 
under Taliban territory, you know, Afghanistan is going back to the Middle Ages, that women's rights are being curtailed, that education isn't being taken seriously anymore. And it, it's such a tragedy. Um, but ultimately, you know, China just wants some sort of government they can deal with in a few years. And that's why they've, they've put their hand out for the Taliban. Well, some would actually say that in, in many respects, putting their hands uh, out to the Taliban is already backing a winner, even if a proxy war doesn't take place. And that can't be good for maintaining stability in the Middle East, surely? Well, they haven't um, completely backed the Taliban. They have talked to the, the government of President Ghani as well, and, and they are uh, the government of uh, the current government within Afghanistan is also keen to. Uh, get some Belt and Road money into Afghanistan. So they're not backing a winner, and I don't think China would paint it like that. You don't know what they're up to behind closed doors, um, but they'll certainly be talking to President Ghani's government as well. Um, and China say they want to bring around a reconciliation of some sort, but uh, that is yet to be seen. Uh, are we at risk of seeing what some uh, critics of China are calling the predatory mercantilism? You've mentioned the Belt and Road Initiative there. But this process the Chinese seem to have of going into developing world countries or you know, what might be considered vulnerable countries and saying we can help you build top to tail infrastructure projects quite quickly and for less money than other people are going to offer it. But... Here comes conditions if you don't meet those repayments. Are we likely to see a similar sort of strategy deployed now in Afghanistan? Well, the strategy in general with the Belt and Road Initiative is, um, you know, here's a ton of money. There's no stipulations to it. You don't have to, as uh, U.S. and Western-backed institutions are, so you don't have to reform. You don't have to be democratic. Um, those are your internal affairs. You can do whatever you want within the country as long as you pay your bills on time. And yeah, they use extortionate rates um, in some of these projects, but not every single project ultimately is about, you know, winning uh, to gain a strategic asset. It is more a case of, you know, here's money, we want to use this money and use it for influence within your country because, you know, we come here with riches. But also within Afghanistan, um, you know, under the mountains, there are rare earth element mines and, and China wants to, to have access to those so they can more control the supply of it. Um, but to an extent, yeah, there is predatory mercantilism, but uh, you know, we, we shouldn't overstate it. And I mean, let's let's stick on this uh, idea of the predatory mercantilism, because it's something that, you know, we, we talk about, you know, with people like you and I quite readily. But to explain that a bit more to viewers, this is essentially the fact that China will offer to create a certain project, make the conditions for repayment as such that, you know, some countries are really struggling to meet those conditions. And thus, China has them rather in thumbscrews. Is that a, a fair definition? To an extent, especially within um, Sri Lanka, obviously that's the case that, that many point to the uh, the investment in the port um, that ultimately uh, Sri Lanka couldn't pay back. But this is the point they they sort of give the money to these governments who don't necessarily represent the people um, of these countries. You know, these are governments that the West aren't too comfortable with, but sort of go along with. Um, and you could see something in Afghanistan as well if the Taliban come to power. You know. Uh, the Taliban isn't a movement as such. It's more of a, a ragtag bunch of different factions. But if there is a Taliban influence within government, China will give them money to invest in these projects. And potentially, yeah, if, if they can't pay the debt back, then, then a Chinese company with links to the Chinese Communist Party will take them over. Any risk that China might start selling the Taliban military hardware? Um, well, that's a tough question to answer. They, they might do, um, but at the moment they're giving all the, uh, the, they're giving the idea that they want national reconciliation. They don't want a civil war because don't forget instability on the border of China is never good. Um, you know, it could import, be imported into the country. And if the Taliban are fighting further wars and the Taliban can't crack down on Uyghur separatists, which is what China wants. So, you know, whether they were going to do that to begin with, I don't know. But, um, certainly it, it's a potential option um, and China could explore it, but they, they haven't been selling weapons to them, uh, at least not publicly yet. Sam, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. It's a critical issue and I'm sure we'll come back to you again on this. That's Sam Lewis, who's a bit of a China expert there.
Just a bit. Right, after the break, you don't want to be going anywhere near the Jurassic Coast in Dorset. That's our uh, bit of public information for you as rocks have been falling uh, over the weekend. We'll have the latest next with our Southwest reporter, Duncan Sizon. Don't go away. Hello again. Many places will see a dry end to the day, even some bright spells, but further heavy showers for some areas, including the risk of 